Okay, so we have started uh, discussing about equilibrium last time. So we have the definition of the chemical equilibrium. It's just the ratio of products over reactants. And then we solve problem of KC, KP. So giving us an idea what the value of your uh, KC is. Uh, if it's more than one, which means you have more products in the reactant. If it's less than one, you have more uh, reactants compared to the product. Uh, we solve problems, okay? And then we compare the KP and the KC. Okay, in addition to that, okay, uh, we also solve the, what we call Q uh, with respect to K, okay? So what we're going to do today is to end uh, this chapter or module on uh, chemical equilibrium. So after I have the lecture, we, we can go over the module that, that, that you have that discuss on this. Okay. So I put the PowerPoint slide in the group chat. So the next topic that we're going to discuss is the chapter list principle. So you still remember the number game that we have? What number did we end? The exchange. What number did we end on, on that exchange thing? Okay. So it hit uh, box R. You still remember that? And box P. So it is, if I'm not mistaken, 1327. And then we have 77, seven, Tama. So what happened if I put 20 items here? So did it become what? 47, and then we continue again. So one half of 13 is 6.5, so it's still seven, but this now one fourth of 17 is equal to one. Okay, so this is equal to 12. So when you have that, this is now, you do seven, you uh, gain 12. So this is what, 18? And this now become, you lose 12, you gain seven. Is it 42? Are you following? Are you still with me? Hello. Okay. So we get one half of 18 here. So that's nine. So one part of this, how much? Maybe 11. This 11 times 11 is 44. So what is one part of 42? The exact number, anyone? 10.5, sir. Okay, 10.5, you round it up, it's 11. So if we have that, so this is 20, and this is what? 40. So you have here one half of that, that's 10. One fourth of that is 10. And then we have 20 here, and then we have what we call 40. So we now reach the so-called equilibrium. Okay? So based on the number games, when you add something here, 20, the system adjusts itself until it reach equilibrium point. So that 20 that we added there, we could say that's what we call the stress that you have, okay? And the Chatterley's principle stated that 
If an external stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system adjusts in such a way that the stress is partially offset as the system reaches a new equilibrium position. Okay, so one of the stress that we have here is the concentration. So here in the previous slide that we have, okay, we added something in the product. And the reaction was favored to move toward the reactant. So when we have a stress in the form of concentration, okay, the way that it affected the system is if you add anything, okay, what happened is it will favor the reaction that will utilize that added material. So for instance, here, this is what we call the ammonia. So nitrogen plus three hydrogen to produce two ammonia. So if you add ammonia, the one that will be favor is the backward reaction. So the system will try to utilize the added thing, okay? Until such time it will reach equilibrium. Now, in the other hand, okay? Or if you're going to look at the graph at what is happening here, so, so everything is at equilibrium here and then all of a sudden you, see an increase of your ammonia. And since it increases, what will happen? It will react. It will be utilized and it will produce both the hydrogen and the nitrogen that you can see on the, product, uh, on the reaction side. So the reactants are the one that is being produced because the reaction favor the backward reaction, okay? So anytime you see changes in the concentration, if you're going to look at the general equation okay, of a chemical reaction, so whenever the change in, in such a way you're adding something, it's going to favor the reaction that will utilize that added material. So if you add more products, it will favor the formation of the reactants, okay? Increasing the concentration of the product will shift the equilibrium to the left. Now, if you're going to remove some of these, what we call uh, products, the reaction will favor uh, the direction wherein it will going to produce products to replace okay, the materials that was removed. So if there's a decrease in the concentration of the products, the reaction would favor uh, the, the forward reaction. Now, if it's the other way around, you added more reactants, it will favor through the utilization of that added reactant. So it favors the forward reaction. And if you going to remove uh, reactants, it will favor uh, the reaction towards the reactant to replace the reactant that was removed. So question here. Question? So, uh, ang style lang dito, kapag nag-add ka dito ng something, okay? So, it will pay more towards that formation. Kapag nag-remove ka something dito, it will pay more also towards that reaction. So, if you added something here, that one needs to be utilized. Okay, if you remove something here, okay, that thing has to be replaced. So that's how they adjust with the so-called stress, okay? Stress na ba kayo sa exam? So if you're going to look at this as a real life, it's up to you how you adjust when you are coping with stress. So the stress that we have this week is the exam, true or false? Okay, now another stress that you have, okay, is what we call volume and pressure. Now, you know, based on the gas laws that you have, that you should have studied by now, okay, that pressure and volume are related. Anong gas law na yun? Baka lumabas sa exam yun. 
hindi na nga calculation yung gas flow dyan eh. But what is that law that relate volume and pressure? Sige nga, kung handa na kayo sa exam. What's the gas law that relate pressure and volume? Sir, Boyle's law po. Okay, Boyle's law. Now, how is the relationship? How do you uh, put the statements of Boyle's law? Inversely. Inversely proportional po. Okay, so Boyle's law states that volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Or pressure is inversely or indirectly proportional to volume. So if you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume. If you decrease the pressure, you increase the volume. Now, the effect of the volume and the pressure will only happen okay, if there's an unequal number of moles in the gaseous and uh, in the in the gaseous reactants and uh, gaseous product sites. So the only one that is affected by here are the gases. Okay? And it will only be affected if there are an equal uh, what we call concentration or uh, number of moles. What happens if they're equal? Let's say Ag equals to uh, producing Cg. What do you think the effect? If you increase the pressure or decrease the pressure, increase the volume or decrease the volume, what is the effect if they have the same equal amount of reactants and products, equal number of moles? Hmm? So if they are what we call the same number of moles, uh, volume and pressure changes has no effect. Okay. So what happened here? <laughs> I'm just going to clean this up again. So if we're going to look at the relationship here, okay? So if there's an increase in pressure, it favors the reaction to the direction that will uh, produce least amount or fewest moles of gas. Because increase in pressure means decrease in volume, okay? If you decrease the pressure, it favors the size with the more, more number of moles of gas. Now, if it's increasing the volume, which is synonymous to decreasing pressure, okay, it will also favor uh, the reaction towards the one that has more number of species. So the same thing if you have what we call the decreasing volume, so it favors the one that has uh, what we call fewer number of species, okay? So this is only uh, possible if there's an unequal, an unequal number of species in both sides. If they're equal, there's no effect on it, okay? Now, temperature. So temperature is a little bit complicated, okay? Because the shift depends whether you have what? An exothermic or an endothermic reaction. So are you ready for this? Are you ready to answer a question? Which of the following is an exothermic process? Or which of the following is an endothermic process? Or maybe a true or false question. Melting of ice is an exothermic reaction. True or false? Now. Melting of ice is an endo, uh, exothermic reaction. Is that true or false? Huh? So melting of ice is not an exothermic. That's why that statement, melting of ice is an exothermic, is false. 
melting of ice is an endothermic process. Now, the way that you have to look at this is just to know where is heat. You treat heat either as what? Reactant or product, depending on where heat is. So in an exothermic reaction, where is heat? Nasaan yung heat? So in an exothermic reaction, <laughs> nasaan yung heat? Nasa reactant or product side? It's inside the system. Lagot tayo niya bukas. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is either here side, this side, or this side. Okay? And both of them are what we call the system. So it's either going into the system or going out of the system. So it's exothermic. Where is heat? It is in the product side. Right? Kasi nga, going out of the system. So it is released by the reaction. Now, endothermic, it is on the reactant side. So that's how you're going to what we call assume the situation here. So what does it mean? You treat heat as either one of the products or one of the reactants, depending on what side they are. Okay, so what happened if you increase the temperature? Ano prob ano mangyayari? Sa exothermic reaction, alin yung magpre-favor? Forward or backward? Okay, since ang heat ay nasa product dito, okay, so ang mangyayari, nag-increase ka ng temp, Okay, so if you have the heat here, the one if the paper is the formation we're in, you're going to reduce the heat. Remember, if you increase the temp, that means if you treat it as a product, nini increase mo yung product. So pag ini increase mo yung product, magpe paper yung backward reaction. Kapag nag paper or yung backward reaction, you look at the K, so re, uh, product over reactant. Since toward the reactant ang mangyayari, tataas siya. So pag tumaas yung R, bababa yung K. Okay? Now on the other hand, if you have an endothermic reaction, okay, so nandito yung heat, so if you increase that, what will happen? Tataas yung heat dito, so parang dumami yung species mo, so magpe-favor yung forward reaction. So pag nag-favor yung forward reaction, tataas yung product. So pag tumaas yung product, tataas yung K. Klaro? That clear? Now, if it's the other way around, decrease temperature, lumamig. So for this one, alin yung magpipaybor? So pag lumamig, magpipaybor yung formation ng heat. Pag lumamig, ibig sabihin, bumaba yung heat dito. So pag bumaba yung heat, as I told you, treat it as one of the reactant or product, so there's less product. So if there's less product, the forward reaction is favored. So if that's the case, your K-value the uh, increases. Then in the endothermic reaction, since bumaba yung heat, so bumaba yung reactant side, so magpe-favor yung form, for, uh, direction towards the reactant side. And dumami yung reactant, bumaba yung K. So this is just one of the stress we're in temperature has a uh, direct effect on it. 
nagbabago yung k-value at different temperature. It's not only uh, shifting the direction, but it's also changing the value of k depending on the temperature. Remember when we had the discussion last week, k value is always specified at a particular temperature. Okay? So if you're given this reaction, is this endo or exo? Sige nga, kung ready na kayo sa exam. Think. Is this an endothermic reaction or an exothermic reaction? Sige nga. Yan yung coverage ng exam nyo. Ngayon sa Friday. Sige nga. Isagutin nyo nga. Para malaman ko. Kung handa na kayo. At para malaman ko kung nag-aral na kayo. I don't want a question mark. Kasi yung tanong na to, given this reaction, this is endothermic, true or false? Given this reaction, this is exothermic, true or false? So based on this one, okay, some of you will lose point. This is what? Ano magsasabi sa'yo kung this is endo or exo? Anyone? Okay. It is endo because you have a positive delta. Nag-gets ba? Nung iba? Yung iba, nasagot ay exo. Plus, this type of question is sure points. Kaya hindi na ako nabigla sa score nyo last time. I always suspect that hindi kayo nag-aaral. Kasi open notes. And the advice that I gave you, all of the questions that we prepared is in your module. And what did I discover? When we resume our class, not all of you are reading it. Not all of you are looking at the material. Okay? That's why he says, spontaneously, you're going to what? Fail an exam. That's a spontaneous process. Okay? So these are the type of questions that will come out. Now, I, I don't know if you say the, the quiz that I gave you is easy, but most of the question is similar to that, and I already made the answer available to that. All of them are available by now. Okay? So if you're going to look at the system, so what does this mean? Saan siya magbabrown? Pag mainit or malamig? Hmm? When do you expect it to be brown? When it is high temperature or hot condition or low temperature or cold condition? Okay. How about the others? Isa lang sumagot.
So this happens when you have hot. Because if this is hot, that means tataas yung ano dito, nandito yung uh, heat mo. So it will become more brown. So if it's cold like this one, so it is lighter than that one. But if it's hot, it's darker than that one, which means mas maraming NO2 ang nag-form. Clear? Now, the, uh, the, the last, uh, what we call stress that you have here is the so-called catalyst. Catalyst is just anything that you add to make the reaction pass. It doesn't change the K. It doesn't shift the position of the equilibrium. Okay? So what you do is you just speed up the reaction. So it will not affect the shift in the equilibrium and it will not affect also okay, uh, the K value. The, the, the difference with that one is it just make both reaction faster. So this is the one that has a catalyst or a catalyst compared to the one that you have here. Okay, so if we summarize uh, the Le Chatelier's principle, so we could say the concentration, it can shift the equilibrium. Okay, when you add something, it will favor the reaction that will utilize it. If you remove something, it will favor the reaction where you're going to produce materials to replace the one that you remove. Pressure, well, it depends. Okay. Uh, if you increase the pressure, it will favor the side that has smaller amount or smaller amount of species or lower moles of uh, species. If you uh, decrease the pressure, it will favor the one that has higher amount. Okay, there's no change in the equilibrium constant. Volume is synonymous to pressure, a higher volume, lower pressure. It will shift the reaction that has more products or more materials or more number of moles of species. If you decrease the volume at higher pressure, it will favor the side that has lower materials. And again, it will not shift the equilibrium constant. Now, temperature, it will shift the equilibrium depending if it's endo and exothermic, and it will change the K value. So at different temperature, you have different K. Lastly, catalyst will not shift the equilibrium and it will not affect the equilibrium constant. So this ends the chemical equilibrium form. This end yung tinatawag nating module. Ano? Six point one. Trying to find Tunasa and a young. I'm trying to open. Mm 
Try to open in the course guide. So this is the thing. Now, I want you to what we call take care of everything here. So I think uh, my friend Mark Angelia did something here that is really good. So it's similar to what I have discussed. So, but I, I would suggest just watch it. Look, there's already 2.2K uh, views of that because all Chem 18 students are watching it, okay? So question. Question before I turn off the recording. Ano? No, no. So what do you mean by inert solid? Wala silang effect. Inert nga eh. So it uh, doesn't affect the reaction. So if you have, let's say, inert, you added it in terms of, let's say, inert gases, but it won't affect the equilibrium. And maybe this exemplify kung bakit hindi mo sinasama yung mga solids and liquid because they're just there, inert. The concentration and the pressure depends on the other species, but not them. So, tanong. Nakikita niyo ba yung score niyo sa mga quiz? Ang hindi ko pa na ano yung functional group. I think I create some but not everyone. Kasi kailangan ko isa-isa i-download yung sinabit niyo eh.
שלום. מתנו. פשון? רגע למה? Yeah, kasi ang epekto naman ng pressure tsaka volume directly sa gas eh. Again, I just need to get the pen. Okay. So equal number of moles. Pareho yung number of moles sa reactant, sa product side. Kung, kung, kung i-add mo, two moles sa reactant, two moles sa product. Hindi ba clear yun? You might have different species, but uh, when you added them, remember the delta N? Yun, kapag ang delta N mo is zero. Clear ba yun? So maari may dalawang species ka sa isang side, pero pag inad mo dalawa, ang moles, tapos sa isang site, isang species, pero dalawang mole yun, like H2F2 sa isang site, tapos sa kabilang site, 2HF. That's equal uh, number of moles. So the, the pressure and the volume will not have any effect on that. So, tanong. May tanong? Before we go to the exam, kung may tanong kayo sa mga exam question,
So I'm going to turn this off.